praise the lord we are able to gather this morning to worship and exalt our god name and also our jesus our heavenly father the privilege that we receive because of his grace we are in his kingdom because you are part of the body of the name and go we are separated physically in different places in our homes and yet we could have we could come to worship in one spirit but God's presence is with us because of your promise, promise. and uh, let us start our service and God is with us and he, he will bless us I will ask uh, my wife to read Psalm 100 if you have Bible will you please turn to Psalm 100 Psalm 100 Shout for joy to the Lord all the earth Worship the Lord with gladness Come before him with joyful song Know that the Lord is God It is he who made us and we are his We are his people the sheep of his pasture Yet at his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. Let's pray and come this service in God's hand. Father God, we are coming to your presence this morning as your people gather together to worship and exalt your name. Thank you, Lord, your presence is with us because of your promise. Thank you, Lord, for all the though we are physically separated, we are together because your presence is with us in the homes wherever we are gathered, Lord, Father, this morning. Thank the Lord, you are God who loves and cares for us in spite of what you are, Lord. We pray what a privilege and honor and joy to gather as your people to worship and exalt your name this morning. Thank the Lord, Father. We pray, Lord, Father, for Lord, your presence and your blessing. We pray, especially to Mr. Abraham, as he shall the word anoint him, Lord, Father, this morning. Even the health and strength that he needs, the person here, the word is a great blessing to him. We pray, Father, for those who are going to lead the worship, anoint them, Father. Lord, our worship be acceptable to the Holy Spirit, sweet aroma. As you worship, Lord, you, the person will be with us, Lord, Father. Thank you, Lord, Father. Pray for Sunday school, Sunday school children, and the teachers, and pray for a blessing, Father. Children may hear the word and also a lot experience your love in their lives, even the tender age. And Lord, Father, that it comes their life to Lord Father. Teach us, bless them, Lord Father, faithfulness and, and be with them and give them the anointing upon them to teach the word to the children. Sit and Lord Father. The beautiful children, Lord, you are in touch in our hands. We pray, Lord Father, that every child, Lord, so we will be able to come in the life to God during this time. We pray, Father, for the little children, Lord Father. We pray, Lord, to remember them. And Lord, the word says, the kingdom of heaven is like little children, Lord Father. Bless them. This is your children, Lord Father. We pray for the young people, Lord Father. Thank you. For the young people, Lord, even though they are in their homes because of this corona, we pray, Lord Father, as we have this. Good fellowship, bless the time together. Even Lord Father, please, they, even though they are separated, they Lord Father, the Spirit of God be with them and help them to grow spiritually. And wherever they are, they may be a blessing, Lord Father. And bring them back in the kind Lord Father. And I pray for the families. Families are precious, Lord, to you, Father. I pray, bless the families. And also, Lord Father. 
Good morning church we feel extremely excited and blessed to be a part of this service today for those of you who don't know us we're a small mission hospital in a remote northwestern part of maharashtra and some of us have had the opportunity and the blessing of being a part of peniel before but now god has placed us here to serve according to his good will although one in the spirit we sometimes eagerly long for this fellowship of gathering together and we are extremely happy to have the opportunity to lead us into a time of praise and worship on this beautiful morning i'd like to read uh, psalm 86 lord you are forgiving and good abounding in love to all who call to you among the gods there is none like you lord no deeds can compare with yours all the nations you have made will come and worship before you they will bring glory to your name for you are great and do marvelous deeds you alone are god i will glorify your name for great is your love towards me this morning i'd like us to shift our gaze from everything that has been happening around us and fix our eyes on god and his greatness his unparalleled immeasurable incomparable greatness he formed the universe and everything within he created us chose us and called us his own How could we not sing his praise and magnify his holy name shout out from every corner of the earth clap your hands and make a joyful noise to the lord because if we don't the rocks will cry out 
He is my love and my light. He is my light and my salvation. He is my fortress and I will not be shaken. God's faithfulness is unwavering. He is not a man nor a son of man that he should repent. Will he say and not do it? Will he promise and not fulfill? The story of Abraham comes to mind when we think about the faithfulness of God. He lived with the conviction that God wanted to bless him to make a multitude of nations through his seed, Isaac. and he lived a long life with that desire waiting for it to be fulfilled the wait may seem impossible but god's faithfulness remains nevertheless the prophet isaiah shows us the way to wait for his time i have labored in vain i have spent my strength for nothing at all yet what is due me is in the lord's hand and my reward is with god there is no greater joy than seeing god's destiny rise above our circumstances Trust in God's faithfulness requires surrender. His faithfulness endures to all generations 
and neither death nor life nor anything in creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus. As we sing this next song, let us reflect on the innumerable times God has been faithful to us. Through good times and bad, He is on the throne. Oh
Psalm 100 Make a joyful shout to the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before His presence with singing. Know that the Lord, He is God. It is He who has made us and not we ourselves. We are His people, the sheep of His pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful to him and bless his name. For the Lord is good and his mercy is everlasting and his truth endures for all generations. Father, we want to lift our praises to you and you alone. As we enter into a new week, And as we look back into all that you've done for us, Lord, we want to just exalt your name and lift up a shout of joy and praise to you, Lord. Father, we ask that you would be enthroned in our praise and that we would be able to bring a sacrifice of praise to you, putting aside all of our worries and fears and things that distract us, Lord, but be able to set our hearts on praising and glorifying your name. things around us and are influenced by the perishable things of the world. How often we get scared of the things of the world that Christ has already gained victory over. How we often run back to the Egypt 
when God has called us to the heavenly canon. The story of the servant of Elijah goes like this in 2 Kings chapter 6 verse 15 to 17. When they were surrounded by the armies of the king, the servant got scared, but Elijah with his spiritual eyes saw a heavenly door open and the armies of heaven all around them to protect them. When things look like the end of everything in human eyes, there is yet a heavenly door open, a heavenly king fighting for us. In his isolation period in Patmos, John saw the Son of Man, despite the sorrow and loneliness all around, which provides for us a beautiful reality of the heaven beyond what our natural eyes can see. O oh Father, we pray that you open our spiritual eyes to see you in all your majesty, power, authority and splendor, to see your awesome works in everything around, so that we may grow up to be like you, sons and daughters of the Most High, holy and blameless in all that we do, and reflecting Christ to those around us. Yes, Lord, open the eyes of our heart. God's greatness on full display is responsible for the creation of this next hymn by Karl Boberg. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. Splendor and majesty are before him. Strength and glory are in his sanctuary. God is always good. He is always powerful and he is always worthy of praise. His character is not lessened by our lack of attention to it. The creator of the world is just as powerful on an average Monday morning as he is in the midst of a booming thunderstorm. Like the famous evangelist Billy Graham once said, God is infinite and we'll never fully understand his greatness 
not on this side of eternity. While our human minds cannot fully comprehend God, recognizing Him and His greatness and His presence can give us the strength for today and the hope for tomorrow. And when we do, we cannot help but fall to our knees and worship Him. How awesome is your name, Lord! How mighty is your love! You have created and called us for your purpose, to bring glory to your name. We fall at your throne, humbled and grateful for your Son, Jesus, and for your mercy and grace that flows from your throne in our time of need. We stand in awe of you, Lord, who created the heavens and earth, and we give you the highest praise, for you alone deserve it. You reign in our hearts and over everything you've created. As we bow down in your presence, we humbly acknowledge the fact that you are great and majestic. Lord, as we go through the rest of this time of fellowship, speak to us through your Holy Spirit that you've placed in our hearts, and may your name alone be glorified. In your matchless name we pray. Amen.
Hi, I am Jerusha and I would like to thank God for a safe pregnancy and delivery. It's been quite an eventful year for us, but we have much to be thankful to God for. I'm thankful to God that I was able to travel to Velo before the first lockdown. We had just a few hours to make that decision and we were able to for which I'm thankful. And as I was on the flight to Chennai, my co-passenger said, "This must be such a hard time to be pregnant." And indeed, I was quite concerned about how everything would be in this very new situation. I was really encouraged though a few weeks later when I listened to a podcast by David Platt where he prayed over expecting mothers. In that he said that despite the fact that what we often hear in the news is the number of people who have succumbed to COVID-19 Every child being brought into this world is a reminder to us that God is still the author of life. And this really helped me. I'm also really thankful to God that Denzel could travel exactly 2 weeks prior to the baby's arrival. This meant that his quarantine period ended on the day our daughter arrived. A few weeks ago I had listened to a sermon at church where the verse from Joshua chapter 4 verse 3 came alive to me. But the Lord encourages Joshua saying you will know which way to go since you have never been this way before and that really strengthened me as i looked forward to the birth i'm really grateful to god that all went well and i thank god for every one of you who have prayed for us and continue to pray for us and have helped us in so many different ways i'm especially grateful to my mother and to georgie and auntie for standing with me while i labored And I really thank God for Gigi Auntie and her entire team that went the second mile making sure we were comfortable and just for taking such good care of us. This was a real answer to prayer as I knew that labor would not be easy but I did want to look back on it with thanksgiving. And it truly was a positive experience for which I am so thankful to God. I'm also thankful for Benjiana for all the baby care advice. We have named our daughter Elizabeth Joanna because God is our surety and is gracious to us. This really reflects the season of our lives and the precious gift of our daughter is a reminder to us of this. Please continue to pray for us as we bring up our daughter in the fear of the Lord. Today's Bible reading begins with Romans chapter 12. I appeal to you therefore brothers and sisters by the mercies of God to present your bodies as a living sacrifice holy and acceptable to God which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world but be transformed by the renewing of your minds so that you may discern what is the will of God what is good and acceptable and perfect. Romans chapter 6 verses 19 I'm speaking in human terms because of your natural limitations. But just as you once presented your members as slaves to impurity, to the greater and greater iniquity, so now present your members as slaves to righteousness for sanctification. 1 John chapter 2 verses 15 and 16. Do not love the world or the things in the world. The love of the Father is not in those who love the world. for all that is in the world the desires of the flesh the desires of the eyes the pride and riches come not from the father but from the world jeremiah chapter 4 verses 3 for thus says the lord to the people of juda and to the inhabitants of jerusalem break up your fallow ground and do not sow among thorns here ends the bible reading Praise the Lord. 
we greet you all in the matchless name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I consider it is a great joy and privilege for us today to have fellowship with Penial Church and share the word of God with you all. Ever since we had come here in Vellur in the year 2000 onwards, we have been a great deep intimate relationship with Pastor Thomas Angel, Nalini Andy and with the Peniel Church. Especially about one year before when my wife was undergone a severe brain surgery during our painful, difficult times. Dear Thomas Angel, Nalini Andy and Peniel Church have been with us by your precious prayer and uh, love and God. Really, it was a great strength for us. Now, by the grace of God, my beloved wife, Sally, is totally all right, came back to the normal life. Now, she is doing everything by herself. Praise the Lord for it. Special thanks to Pastor Randall and Church for it. Praise the Lord. Now, I want to say a few words about what we are doing in Vellu. By the grace of God, as per the Holy Spirit leadings, we have started our ministry in Vellu by name Deliverance Mission to the Unreached. Under this DMV ministry, we have been doing mainly two types of ministry. One is we are training missionaries to plant churches in the very remote villages of India. At present, there are 150 native missionaries are working with us and uh, they are planting churches and presence in different villages across four states at present. Around 800 villages already our brothers started meetings and services. Every year, 400 plus villages taking baptism and added to our church and serving the Lord in the villages. Other than this missionary work, for the last eight years, we have been doing a ministry for the North Indian patient. Inside CMC and outside, weekly we are conducting eight Hindi meetings. In that in Hindi meeting, Hindi belt people, same time, from Bengal also so many people coming. Weekly, more than 150 these people are attending in our weekly meeting. Throughout our weekly meetings, we are conducting different level of meeting for these people. Since they are broken and suffering people, soon after they have heard the word of God, they are submitting their life to the Lord's hand. Later on, Lord has been doing tremendous things upon them. They really feel the God's manifestation in their life by joy, peace, deliverance, healing and all. So that through our different types of meeting, they are accepting the Lord, taking baptism, then they are decided to serve the Lord back in their places after they reach their places. For the last four years, we are doing something more for the Sindhi people. Yearly two times now we are conducting a special crash course for our Hindi believers. So once in six months, that means yearly two times, we are bringing them our Hindi believers to here in Bellu and making them to stay in our trust building and conducting short term training course for our Hindi believers. After this meeting and training, now they have gone back and started, many of them started prayer cells and some of them already started worship source. Among them, one person's Ministry is somewhat notable. 
around eight years back, one patient came from Orissa to Velu. We have got a chance to meet them in our uh, OPD basement meeting. After they have attended our meeting, they have accepted the Lord and uh, God inspired by the word and uh, God's presence. Afterwards, they gone back to Orissa. Then they invited us. We went over there. Then they, we continuously started to visit them once in a month for two, three days. We stayed over there. We encouraged them. We taught them where. Then they decided to start the ministry over there. By the grace of God now, they have 300 believers attending in their church. Now that sister, one who had cancer, now by the grace of God every day, she is taking 40 days fasting for the deliverance of that people. By the grace of God, both of them, Brother Moses and Sister Vani, both of them are so much powerfully doing the Lord's ministry over there. Every day they are conducting meetings for this uh, uh, Odia people. People from 50 kilometer to 150 kilometer. Souls are coming to the church because of that, that is the way the Lord is using that family for evangelize those areas and bring souls to the Lord's kingdom. Now, I want to share the word of God. Praise the Lord. <coughs> Praise the Lord. <coughs> For a short meditation, I want to read a portion from the book of Romans, chapter 12, the beginning verses. Therefore, I urge you, brothers, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God. This is your spiritual act of worship. Do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, His good, pleasing and perfect will. Today, I want to talk to you a subject which is mainly concerning how can we experience God's mercy in our crisis and difficulties. Many at times, when problem comes, usually we used to get tired and disappointed and discouraged and questioning God. Where is God? Where is God's mercifulness? Where is God's compassionate helping hand? Where is God? Many times, usually, we uh, ask like that. Even in our life also, we have asked like that. Some of you may be asking such questions today. Today, Holy Spirit asked me to talk to you how we can experience God's mercy in our difficulties. See the first line of this verse talking like this that therefore I urge you brothers in view of God's mercy. So Paul wants to talk to you the importance of God's mercy and how can we experience it. The Bible says God is a so merciful God. Psalms 103 verse 13 says like this, As a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. Then Matthew 9 36 says like this, When Jesus saw the crowd, he had compassion on them because they were harassed and helpless, like sheep without shepherd. Isaiah 49 15 says, even if a mother forget a child, the Lord will not forget. Yes, our Lord is a merciful God. 
Our Lord is a compassionate God. You know, another many many references are there regarding how God wants to help us in our crisis. Once our Lord said this, whom ever come unto me, by any way I will not cast them out. Another one time Lord said like this, I will not leave you as orphan. Okay, our Lord is a merciful God. How do we get this mercy, merciful helping hand in our life? I want to bring out three main points. If we uh, take care of that three points, we can easily experience God's helping merciful hand. Okay, first point. Here, Paul says like this. Offer your bodies as living sacrifice. Okay, in order to get God's mercifulness, helping service in our life, first, whatever situation, whatever problem we face in our life, what we supposed to do is that we have to submit our body as a burnt offering, living sacrifice on the Lord's altar. What is the meaning of a sacrifice? What is the meaning of? Usually sacrifice means killing something. You know, in the Old Testament, many times our Israelis were conducting sacrifices. Wherever, whenever they conduct the sacrifice, some animals are killing. The New Testament perspective also in the service as per this particular usage, living sacrifice, some area should be died. Which area? That is what this, we are going to uh, look out now. As per the Bible, we know that many times Bible says that we have to put to death something from our life. What is that? We know that in our body, there are five sense of organs are there. Actually, the sense of organs are the gift of God only. It is very much useful to interact and contact with the world. That is very much blessed things from the Lord. But at the same time, we need to know that the Bible has given us the limitation to exercise our sense of organ. If we cross the boundaries, it will cause for evil. Sometimes lose our good conscience also. Meaning is that God has given our sense of organ. It is very important for our life. But if we are crossing the boundaries of the word of God which Lord has given us that cause so much sinfulness, wickedness and unrighteousness taking place in our life. Example, if we talk uncontrollably, if we hear uncontrollably some dirty things, if we see something uncontrollably, some filthy things, that is wicked things before God. So here, as per this statement, living sacrifice means we have to hand over our burnt body to the Lord's altar so that the whatever, the whichever, the unwanted stuff in our body would be burnt out. I want to just show you one reference from the Bible in order to understand this point more. Romans Chapter 6, verse 19. For just as you presented your members as slaves of uncleanness and of lawless, leading to more lawlessness, so now present your members as slaves of righteousness for holiness. Previously, with our body, we have done so many unwanted, ungodly things. Now, as per this statement, God says that every day we have to surrender our body on the Lord's altar 
so the lord would help us to live a holy life in our life moreover paul also says like this galatians 2 20 i am crucified with christ here after i no longer live but christ liveth in me so dear ones in order to experience god's mercifulness in our difficulties and crises we need to know that we supposed to submit our body as a living sacrifice to the lord's altar then the bible says like this that do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world what is the meaning of this don't conform to the pattern of this world in order to see god's mercifulness we have to see this area also what is the meaning of pattern of this world as per the bible there is a special meaning is there for the world first john chapter 2 verse 15 and 16 do not love the world or things in the world if anyone love the world the love of the father is not with them then 16 the lust of the flesh the lust of the eyes and the pride of life comes not from the father but from the world so here we see the clear picture of what is world the lord says we don't love the world then says that lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes pride of life all these are connected to world we should avoid that is what the word of god says in order to understand more about that point i want to take you to the 10th commandment you know for the lust there is another one more word is there covet what is the meaning of covet in the 10th commandment we see that covet is the last commandment of it okay that is also a serious sin then in the new testament paul is dealing with this sin covet in the book of roman chapter 7 one full chapter now paul is taking to deal with this horrible sin covet you may not think that much that this is is it that much serious of it i want to take your attention to the end of that seventh chapter in the seventh chapter end we see that 19 and 20th words for the good that i will to do i do not do but the evil i will not to do that i practice in other ways paul says i wanted to do some good things but i don't know and knowingly instead of good things i am doing some wrong things then the 20th verse says like this now if i do what i will not to do it is no longer i who do it but sin that dwells in me see this chapter is totally dealing with the covet covet means equal to lust okay so here paul says that because of this covetousness there is a sinful act of work is something like a spirit at work in our body that is what the here paul says so that is why though we wanted to do some righteous things but unknowingly because of that sinful spirit working in our body we forced to do some evil things then paul says in the 8th chapter second verse like this that 
the law of the spirit of the, in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death even though this sinful spirit is working in our body because of that covetousness here paul says that through the christ through the death of our blessed lord we are getting total freedom from the spirit which is causing us to do unrighteousness through the blood of jesus through the that statement is say like this the spirit of life in christ jesus has made me free from the law of sin okay the spirit of christ it has got god's life is there that life once comes in our life that god's life will break the sinful spirit that is what paul says here so dear ones this is also very important things in our uh, life uh, so according to this word there is hope for us to have a successful life in the area of conform to the pattern of world third i want to bring your attention to the uh, third point it says like this that be transformed by the renewing of your mind what is the meaning of that renewing of your mind i want to bring this mind with uh, bring your attention to talk with the uh, what is the code a cultivation land you know if you go to a cultivation land the farmer before we, he do the cultivation what does he do he would plow the land then uh, take out the stone thorns and everything then make it soften the land then only he would sow the seed the same way the bible says our mind is also something like a, a hard land hard earth if god wants to talk to us god wants to show his mercy in our life we need to be plowed our mind like a hard land how does it possible that is why the book of jeremiah 4:3 says like that break up your unplowed ground don't sow among thorns that means there are so much hardness knowing or unknowingly periodically happening in our mind so lord says we have to be transformed by renewing our mind that is very very important so i encourage every one of you in order to see god's mercy in our life we need to note down these three points first is that when we are in crisis and difficulties we submit our body like a living sacrifice into the lord's altar second we don't be conformed with the pattern of the world third be transformed by renewing your mind so that what happened the next point say like this if we do this three areas correct our life then you are going to see god's mercifulness in our life how does he show of his mercifulness in our life that bible says like this that then you will be able to test and approve what god's will is his good pleasing and perfect will so in our difficulties lord out of his mercifulness he is coming to us with his blessed will he wants to show off his will to us 
in the midst of our crisis. The Bible says, if we accept that His will in it, there are three blessings that are there. What are they? One is say like this, in it, goodness is there. Second, in it, pleasing is there. Third, in it, perfection is there. That means, if we ready to follow the will of God, when God talked to us, in it, goodness is there. Goodness means what? If there is some physical problem, you can expect healing. If there is some financial problem, you can expect prosperity. If you face any level of difficulties, financial or outward, material areas, God will meet our financial problem, our material problem. That is why he says that he is the Lord of richness. He is the Lord of prosperity. He wants to send off his, gives us his blessing. That is why it says that in his will, goodness is there. Then says that pleasing is there. You know, on both sides, God's side and our side, if we follow, listen to God's will, we feel so much pleasing. Pleasing means we would appreciate that God's will later on. Because you know, Whatever God says, if we go accordingly, there is appreciation, there is satisfaction in it. God is also satisfied in your case and we are also really feel so much satisfaction in our life. Then the third point in His will, perfection is there. Perfection means what? Later on you don't feel that, oh, this is not the things I am supposed to do. No. Whatever God says in the midst of your crisis, you straight away do it. There is perfection in it. Then you will be 100% satisfied in your areas. Praise the Lord. So, I encourage you, as per this word of God, God wants to show off His mercifulness in our crisis. What we supposed to do? We have to listen these three areas. If you correct these three areas, the Bible says He would come with His blessed perfect will. In His will, perfection is there, pleasing is there, then the goodness is there. Then you will be a blessed person. So, uh, uh, when I talk about this area, I feel to share something about how God has helped, helped us in our life during our past difficulties. You know, about 20 years back, we had come here uh, for our son's treatment because in the year 2000, my son had affected with the cancer. With a broken condition, only we had come here in Bellu to take treatment in CMC. The beginning doctor said only 50% day hope is there. That time we cried and shed tears and looked into the Lord's face. At that time Lord said, you have to stay back here. I want to help you, but you have to listen to my will. I surrender, Lord, whatever Lord you ask me, I am ready to obey. I surrender it for the Lord's will. Later on, very quickly, Lord has done a great visitation upon son's life and it was a tremendous uh, healing vis visitation. Now by the grace of God last uh, more than eight years, there is no treatment in connection with my son's uh, case. Totally he is okay. Some years back he has got married and uh, God bless him with a child also. Then as per the God's guidance, we have been staying here in Bellu and doing God's work. And uh, some eight be uh, years before, my son-in-law, Pastor Domon, had affected with the uh, appetitis B. That was also a life turning case in our life. That area also, my wife took him to 
the Gaston Dole, the department, Dr. George Wynn was the department in charge. And uh, the doctor said, after checkup, said that he had hepatitis B, now turned into hepatitis A. So he need to do the liver biopsy. That time, why boldly said to doctor that, doctor, we believe in miracles. Actually, in the hope of our son's cancer, we prayed, Lord has done a great visitation in my son's life and he is perfectly all right. So would you please give us two weeks time to pray with our uh, son, uh, Pastor John Moore. He said, okay. We prayed and two weeks time we literally shed tears and prayed. Later on we went and given the blood. And after the culture, doctor said, now he is perfectly all right. No hepatitis B or A. Without any medication, he came out. Then one year before my wife was undergone the severe brain surgery. That one also it was very crucial. 16 days she was on ventilator. 21 days she was in a very critical situation. Doctor said very difficult to get the life back. Even if the life get back, she may not use her right side because right side may get collapsed. But by the grace of God, during this painful time, when we surrendered and cried and prayed, God has really came to us according to this verse and given the word that you are supposed to follow His will. Be surrendered. Then later on, really as per this verse, we are experiencing His perfection in our life, His pleasing in our life, His goodness in our life. In our ministry area, in our every area of our life, we are really experiencing this benefit since we are obeying His will. So I agree with every one of you, in whatever situation you may be faced today, no problem. Our Lord is a merciful God. He wants to come and help you and talk to you and show up His will in the midst of your crisis. What are we supposed to do? We have to note down these three points in order to get His revelation of God's will. May God bless you with these verses. Thank you. Praise the Lord and praise and thank the Lord for giving us this wonderful opportunity to worship among you. I'd like to thank Peniel Tabernacle for inviting us for this uh, fellowship. Uh, today we'd like to start off with an English and a Hindi song. So I'd request you all to join it together so that we can sing and worship him.
God, we just thank you for this time of worship. We praise you because you are an almighty God. You are our king. You are our father. You are faithful and you are merciful. You are enthroned on your throne. And all things that have come to pass have been planned and ordained by you. We praise you because you are in control. You are in control of our days ahead of our lives, of our church and Lord, of our brothers and sisters in Christ, Father. We thank you, Lord, for Pastor Uncle and Nalini Auntie. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for the work of their hands, for the encouragement that they bring and for all their prayers. We thank you, Father, for Pastor Jacob's sermon. We thank you, Lord, for speaking to us through him, Father. Help us, Lord, to apply what he has spoken, Lord, to our lives. We thank you for the worship of the worship team, Father. We thank you for each member of this worship team. Thank you, Lord, for working in their lives, for being with them, Lord, even if they have led our church in worship. We thank you, Lord, for all the services that are online as part of our church. We thank you, Lord, for this, for Benji, for putting together for ev everything, Lord. We thank you for the Bible studies which are being held every day. We thank you, Lord, for people actively participating in the Bible studies. We thank you, Father, because your word will not come back unreturned, Father. Thank you, Lord, for the Sunday schools. We thank you, Lord, for Sunday school teachers. We thank you, Lord, for the children attending the Sunday school, Father. We pray, Lord, the word sowed, the Lord will reap 60, 80, and 100 fold, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for the youth fellowship, which is still active. We thank you, Lord, for the youth work, Lord, who have taken this opportunity to come closer to you, Father. Lord, who are enjoying your presence each day. And Lord, we thank you, Lord, for the light they are in their individual places, Father, in their college, in their homes, Father, in as they reach out to other people because of you, Father. Lord, we pray, Lord, for the frontline workers from our church and in other churches, Lord. We thank you, Father, for the work that they are doing. We pray, Lord, that you bless the work of their hands. Lord, we pray, Lord, that you be with them, Lord, even during this time. Lord, that they don't despair at the times ahead, Father. May they, may them, may they, Lord, find their strength in you, Father. Protect them, Lord, from the coronavirus. Pray, Lord, we protect their families too, Lord, from this pandemic. Lord, we pray, Lord, for the patients admitted in the wards with both corona and, and with non-corona admissions, Father. Lord, you be with them, Father. You allay all your fears, Father. Be with them, Lord, during this lonely time. Be with your families, Lord, even as they struggle, Lord, to get along together. We thank you, Lord, for those patients healed, who have gone back with renewed strength, Father. We pray, Lord, that they will be able to touch others with the healing that they have been, that have been wrought in their bodies, Father. Lord, we pray for uh, all the ministries supported by our church, Father. We pray, Lord, for blessing youth mission, Navajiva Seva Mandal, the Gideon's ministry, the EMFI, the Voice of the Shepherd ministry, the Hindi ministry and the Pastor Andrew's Tamil ministry, Father. Lord, we pray, Lord, that during this time, Father, the administrators of each ministry, Lord, will be able to support their workers, Father, both emotionally, even helping them, Lord, with their salaries, Father. We pray, Lord, for each individual working in this ministry, Father. Lord, they might not be able to travel, Father, during this time, but, Lord, we pray, Lord, they find strength in you to reach out to their flocks. May you be their strength, Father. We pray, Lord, for the other churches, Lord, also supported by these ministries and by our church, Father. 
we pray lord for the various souls in our country father the many soul christian souls in our country we pray lord that during this time lord they will return back to you father be strengthened you and your father we pray lord they be able to strengthen others father we pray for well lord we pray for all the work that is being done in velour we pray lord that you bless the work of their hands even as they control situations over here and as we go about our day to day lives father help us lord to go about wisely we pray for our government in velour in tamil nadu and the rest of india be with them and as they make decision father give them the wisdom the discretion in as they head our nation father We pray Lord for the students in our country father even as they go through turmoil through anxiety as exams are postponed father help them Lord to remain focused in you to find their strength in you father and not to go into despair help them Lord bolster their faith in you father pray for the situation worldwide We pray for our friends who have gone out of fun, out of valor. Pray, Lord, that you be with them even during this time. Be with your families, Father. Lord, we pray, Lord, that you have mercy on our land, Father. Lord, this pandemic was there in your books. And Lord, help us, Lord, to remain steadfast in you, to have faith in you, Father. And help us, Lord, to go from strength to strength. in you father help us lord to remain in you and you in us because without you we cannot bear fruit we can have nothing without you thank you lord for listening to our prayer in jesus name we pray amen dear lord jesus as we come before you father we commit all who celebrate birthdays this week into your hands We pray that they grow in you and that they be used mightily for your kingdom. We also ask for protection for all of them in these times. We remember S Kirtika, Lian and Joshua Jeffring. Father, you direct their paths. Father, you give them wisdom and understanding and the peace. Lord, we pray Lord that you um show them the way that they should go and lord we pray lord that they will walk in your ways father we pray that you will use them mightily for your kingdom lord father we also specially pray for pastor jacob and sally auntie and for their ministry for the hindi prayer in cmc for the bible teaching programs they have father we also remember feba and jomon and their children and finny and his family father father we pray that you bless uh, their ministry abundantly and we pray lord that you will use them mightily in these times lord and always we commit all these requests into your loving hands in jesus name we pray amen let us close this service with benediction to him who is able to keep you from harm and to present you before his glorious presence with the heart of great joy to the only god our savior in glory majesty power and authority through jesus christ our lord amen god bless you Oh